The belief concerning who Jesus Christ truly was and is is a teaching that is misunderstood by many. Who was he really? Was he or is he God? Find out today on Face the Truth. Welcome to Face the Truth, a program brought to you by the Church of Christ. I am Brother Barry Thompson. Many people today believe in Jesus Christ, but what do they believe about him? Take a look. Jesus was composed of two distinct natures in one person. Realize that Jesus Christ is your creator, your God, and your savior. So Jesus, before he came down to earth, was God. When he came down to earth, he took on a physical body. That he rose from the dead and that his followers proclaimed him to be divine. Because they claimed that Christ was nothing more than a mere creature. That God sent down to do a work of salvation. No, God came down to do a work of salvation. You know, if we scrutinize a belief upheld by many about the Lord Jesus Christ, what we would get are terms and phrases such as deity of Christ, second person of the Trinity, dual nature, God, man, man, God. Now these are some of the terms that others who believe Christ to be God would be using in explaining their belief that Christ is the true God. Yet these and other terms used to describe Christ are foreign to the Bible. In fact, there is no definitive proof from the Bible nor taught anywhere in the Scriptures that Christ is God. And if there are verses presented, those verses, when studied intently, scrutinized, would be proven wrongly translated or misunderstood. In fact, what those who teach that Christ is God have are only formulations, suppositions, and assumptions. Well, in our study today about this very important subject, we will not be guessing or using unbiblical terms nor giving you what we think or assume. What we will be doing is using the standard commanded by God when it comes to His commandments and words written in the Holy Scriptures. This is what God has to say. Deuteronomy 12 and the verse is 32. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. And so God is commanding us to be careful or carefully follow what he commands by not adding or subtracting or changing his words in any way. We must remember these are the words of God. These are his words, not our words. What he spoke and what is written is not for us to give our own opinion as to what is actually stated. Even the apostles like Apostle Paul, he warned us as to how we should treat God's words. In 1 Corinthians 4 and 6, the Apostle Paul says this to us. Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one against the other. And so Apostle Paul states, do not go or think beyond what is written to not fall into error concerning God's teachings and commandments. So this is the standard that we will use in understanding the Bible's teaching as to who the Lord Jesus Christ truly is or his true nature. Now since there are those who suppose that Christ is God, then let's start there. What is the nature of the true God as taught by Jesus Christ himself? In John 4:24 the Lord Jesus Christ 
teaches this about God. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. But what is it that the Lord Jesus Christ himself teaches people about God? He said, God is spirit. And so to teach that God's nature is anything other than spirit is to go against the very words of Jesus Christ. But what does that mean? What does it mean that God is spirit? In Luke 24, 39, the Lord Jesus Christ again is the one who will teach us. And he says this, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And so, according also to Christ, our Savior, a spirit does not have flesh and bones like Christ, who in this instance was showing his disciples the difference between himself and a spirit, or even the difference between himself and the true God. But what does the Bible introduce as that which has flesh or is flesh? Uh, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 6. And the verse is uh, 3. This is written. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. So notice, uh, man is flesh or has flesh. And so man is different than God who is spirit. Man has flesh while God has no flesh, no bones, no material form. So we can safely conclude that Christ could not be the true God because Christ is a man in nature, not a spirit as the true God himself is. Well, what about those who would go outside the Bible and teach that God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ? What does God himself have to say about this thinking or uh, assumption or supposition? Find out when we return on Face the Truth. Welcome back. Today we're talking about the misconception many people hold that Christ and God are one and the same, or Christ is God. Now earlier we learned when it comes to their nature, they couldn't possibly be the same. God is spirit. Jesus Christ is a man. Their nature is completely different. But what about those who would go outside the Bible and teach that God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ. What does God himself have to say about this kind of belief? Hosea 11.9, God gives us the answer himself. He says this, I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim. For I am God and not man, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come with terror. So God states in his own words, I am God and not man. Do we need to elaborate or speculate on what God has said? No need. God said, I am God and not man. Enough said. Let's now go to how the Bible introduces the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we will start with the time of the prophets. When the prophets prophesied about the Lord Jesus Christ, namely the prophet Isaiah. When the prophet Isaiah wrote about the coming of Jesus Christ, how did he describe him as far as his nature is concerned? Isaiah 53 and the verses 3. 
He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. According to the prophet Isaiah, he was called a man of sorrows, not a god nor a man god or god man or possessing a dual nature but simply a man now let's move on to his birth when his mother mary gave birth to the lord jesus christ what was his nature matthew 1 18 and 20 as it is described here now the birth of jesus christ was as follows after his mother mary was betrothed to joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Now, when the Lord Jesus Christ was conceived in the womb through the power of the Holy Spirit, what was conceived was a child, a human being, not God. For if you believe that Christ is God, then you would have to accept that the one Mary carried in her womb for so many months was God. Now, no one in their right mind would believe that. Now, let's go to the best source to find out who Jesus Christ was and really is. What is his true nature? The best source would be none other than Jesus Christ himself. What did our Lord Jesus Christ teach concerning his true nature? Let's ask him. John chapter 8 and the verse is 40. This is Jesus Christ speaking. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. Christ here, right, with the perfect opportunity to tell us who he is, Christ introduced himself as a man. Now, was Jesus Christ lying or telling a half-truth or holding back part of the truth from people? Absolutely not. Jesus never lied, never committed even a single sin. So, when he taught that he is a man, that's the truth. In fact, he testifies that the things he spoke are truth, and we know them to be. In the verse we read, he even distinguishes himself from the true God by telling us that he heard the truth from God. So he is not God who heard the truth from himself. That would be silly. Now, did his apostles learn and understand the truth that Jesus Christ taught about his true nature? Let's find out how Apostle Peter described the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to go this time to the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 2 and the verse is 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you. By miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Apostle Peter tells us that Jesus Christ was a man attested by God. Well, maybe you're not convinced yet. So let's go to Apostle Paul, who was called to be an apostle after Jesus Christ was already in heaven. Now, when he wrote about Christ, how did he describe his nature? In 1 Timothy, the chapter is 2 and the verse is 5. Apostle Paul says, For there is one God and one mediator between 
God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul tells us here that Jesus Christ is a man. He also tells us the position of Christ, that he is the one mediator between the one God and man. Not that Christ is the mediator between man and himself, which of course would make no sense. So, so far we are learning from the apostles, the teaching of the apostles, that they understood the true nature of Jesus Christ. Christ taught himself to be a man. The apostles also taught the same thing. How about when the end of the world comes and Christ returns? What will be his nature then? Will it be different? Find out when we come back on Face the Truth. Welcome back to Face the Truth. When the end of the world comes and Christ returns, what will be his nature then? Let's read what the Bible says in Acts chapter 17 and the verse is 31. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. So the Bible teaches that God will judge the world by the man whom he has ordained. And that man is certainly the Lord Jesus Christ. So you don't have to have a doctorate degree to understand what we're studying. It's very easy to understand that at no time in the Bible did Jesus Christ become God. From the time he was prophesied to the time of his birth, when he preached here on earth, the time of his apostles, and even on the day of his return, which is the day of judgment, he will still be a man in nature and not God. And so no one should be confused into believing that Christ is the true God. And if people are confused as to who the true God is, then why don't we let the Lord Jesus Christ himself clear up any misunderstandings by teaching us and telling us about the true God. And this is exactly what he does in John chapter 17 the verses are 3 and 1. These are verses that we should all remember. And this is what the Lord Jesus Christ uh, says to us. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. Now, you know, these verses, if we are to study as to who the true God is, these two verses are really all we would need. Because Christ is very uh, definitive in his statements, he said, 
First of all, this is eternal life. What means eternal life? Christ said that they may know or people may know you. Right? Now, unless Jesus Christ was like looking into a mirror, pointing to himself, well, they may know you and I really mean me. But that's definitely not. We'll find out in a moment where Jesus Christ was looking. But Christ says that they may know you. He did not use the term us. They may know us. They may know we, two, we, three, we, four. Only that they may know you. And he further stated, the only. So meaning to say whatever Christ is speaking about, whatever is the subject matter of his statements, this is the only one. So he said that they may know you, the only true God. Now, where do you insert Christ? Not as the true God. What about Christ? Christ said, and Jesus Christ whom you, whoever Jesus Christ is speaking to, whom you have sent. So Christ himself was sent by the only true God. So whoever Jesus Christ is addressing in his statement as the only true God means there is no one else that we could believe or we should teach or understand or assume is the true God. You. Now who was Christ speaking to? Christ was on earth. He was speaking to the Father in heaven, right? Let's read verse 1 again. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up His eyes to heaven and said, Father, glorify Your Son that Your Son also may glorify You. And so the one Jesus Christ was addressing is the Father in heaven. And concerning the Father in heaven, Christ taught that the Father is the only true God. Now, why would people then insist on their formulations and assumptions about God when the Bible is so clear that there is only one true God, the Father? Jesus Christ is not the Father. He is the Son. So even if a billion or more people have any belief or teaching that goes against these truths of the Bible, we will always take the side of the Bible. Especially the very words of Christ Himself. Now, you know, it should not surprise us that people today have a different belief about Christ other than what the Bible teaches. For this very thing was forewarned by the apostles. What did the Apostle Paul forewarn the Christians about uh, their belief concerning the Lord Jesus Christ? Apostle Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 11, and the verses are 3 and 4. But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus... Whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Apostle Paul warned that there would be those who would teach a different Jesus. Why different? Different than the one preached or taught by the apostles themselves. And we must remember that the Jesus preached by the apostles is a Jesus who is man in his nature, not God. And so no one should go beyond this teaching about Christ, the Bible's teaching about Christ. For they would be going beyond what is written. They would be violating God's command not to add or subtract from his words. And sadly, this very warning of the apostles came to pass. It so happened that after the time of the apostles that there came to be a different teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. When did this teaching that Jesus Christ is God become an official doctrine? We're going to read from an excerpt from a book entitled Discourses on the Apostles' Creed written by 
the Reverend Clement H. Croc on page 206. Thus, for example, it was not until 325 A.D. at the Council of Nicaea that the church defined for us that it was an article of faith that Jesus is truly God. You notice that? It was in 325 A.D. at the Council of Nicaea that it was decided, the council decided that Jesus Christ is God. Notice that the apostles had nothing to do with this teaching, nor was it recorded in the Bible. Christ has nothing to do with it. It was only decided upon by a council convened by the Catholic Church in the 4th century. Should we believe in a council who taught something that directly opposes what Christ taught about himself, what his apostles taught, what the Bible teaches? Well, we don't know about you, but we feel definitely confident in sticking with what's written in the Bible. The clear teaching of the Bible is that Jesus Christ is a man in nature or state of being and not the true God. Now, in the future episodes, we will go deeper into how this doctrine evolved. And you will be surprised not only at the length of time that it took for people to formulate this doctrine, but also the drama that transpired. You know, the truth, it may be painful at first, but whether we accept it or not, whether we believe it or not, the truth is something we all must face. Thanks for joining us. Take care and God bless.